I was a director for seven years of the National Portrait Gallery in Washington. And in that capacity, I dealt with the interesting task of signifying achievement in our culture. And this used to be very easy. This used to be white men on horses, uh, usually generals or presidents. Uh, but I and my colleagues complicated the notion of whom we should pay attention to. Still the idea of significant people who have done a lot, but were they always such a person? And of course, they were not. So the rollout of reality, true history, began with thinking of race and gender in general. And this is a broad conversation in American society anywhere. But it seemed to me that the road was still stopping short of LGBT questions and so forth, which is all also part of the reveal of what a culture really is. So very much at the end of my tenure there, I went on to do something else. I complicated my future successor's life by approving the first exhibition that addressed broadly LGBT issues. It had very much to do with the idea of portraiture, it was called, and it was brought to me as an idea from someone outside, and it was called Hide Seek. And the idea was uh, the portrayal of the gay identity through portraiture, fit within the idea of the portrait gallery. And more than people guess, my going to others and saying we are proposing to do this did not create hysteria, okay? Uh, because really national museums sense times when the public is ready to think about something new. They are not advanced thinkers, I believe, but they are consensus signalers. And maybe I got it a little early before the consensus, but it was still close to, okay, we do this. What will it look like? What would it feel like? And the exhibition, which was done by a curator who came from outside and a curator in my museum, was really terrific. And what it did was reveal that many people already known, actually artists particularly, had gay experience, gay identities. And the Met had never indicated this. Now, you don't have to say everything so-and-so has this kind of identity or that kind of identity, but many of their works were about their gay identity, but never revealed. So the exhibition happened, and it happened in my successor's time. Then it created some controversy in the society, and maybe it wasn't all ready yet for this society. But the exhibition stayed. A few things were taken out, and that's another story. But the exhibition stayed. Then I later returned as director of another national museum, the National Museum of American History. And there the question was not so much exhibitions, but acquisitions of collections. What do we tell about our history? broadly, not just individuals. And we weren't telling anything, even in our collections, not about exhibitions, even what we held about LGBT history. So what does this in the end mean? I did, and with my colleagues, some fighting stronger than I was for this. We began to collect placards of protests. We began to collect all sorts of things. And the collection is growing and growing all the time. There's a curator who spends a lot of time on this now. But the question to me is, why did this happen when it did, and why didn't it happen before? And so it, it boils down to invisibility. History is a construct. Lots happened, but what do we remember from it? And that we chose as a nation not to think about this says a lot. Uh, the history was always there. People were living. People that were not known as gay were living their lives. Uh, and so the nation needed to suddenly say, our history telling is incomplete. We already knew that about race at that point. We already knew that about gender, uh, particularly speaking of women and their role, but we began to think this way. And so it felt both revolutionary and happily in the end ordinary. Of course we should do this. And by the end uh, of my time there, I think the sense was of course. <laughs>